Between my sister and I, my mom was pregnant with a child who had monosomy 18. This meant that instead of having 46 chromosomes like most humans do, she had 45. They weren't sure if she would be able to live, so they had an ultrasound done. They found out that she had hollow prosencephaly, which is where instead of having a right and left side of the brain, you have one like whole blob of brain. She also had one ventricle in her heart, which made it impossible for her heart to beat. She had a club foot, a cleft palate, and a cleft foot. This is why in seventh grade, when DNA was mentioned as instructions for a body that would put together how you would look when you were older, I was super excited because now I could figure out what exactly had killed my sister. Let's put together this random person named Tom. He has brown hair. He likes to skateboard. He has four fingers. He's lactose intolerant, and he can talk. There are three ways that you can classify traits, which are anything about you. There's physical versus behavioral, hidden versus visible, and innate versus learned. Physical traits are material composition, such as Tom's brown hair. Behavioral traits are things that you do, like skateboarding. Hidden traits are traits that you cannot see, such as lactose intolerance. Invisible traits are traits that you can see, like having four fingers. Innate traits are traits that you are born with, such as the ability to talk. And learned traits are traits that were taught to you over time, like the ability to skateboard. DNA is what, is what causes your non-environmental traits. These traits were, did not come from things around you. Instead, they came from your human genome, which is made of DNA. In Sophia's case, my parents knew that her condition was, called by, was caused by something called chromosomes, and they weren't quite too sure what that meant. Chromosomes are made up of DNA, which is wrapped around histone proteins many times, and then they're layered on top of each other. What happens with monosomy is usually the egg and the sperm each have one of each copy of the chromosomes in them. But the problem was is that either the egg or the sperm did not have an 18th chromosome. So when they met, my sister did not have, was missing one of her 18th chromosomes. So when the body put together the instructions for her and it was reading through all of her chromosomes, when it got to the 18th chromosome, it read through it, and it realized that there were some alleles or mutations. Mutations are variations in your genes. Usually when this happens, the body would go to the other chromosome, and it would check and see if it had the missing pieces. This is why chromosomes are so important. It's also why when a baby has monosomy, it's like a pendulum, whether the baby will, able, will be able to live or not. When my parents found out about monosomy, that's why they had the ultrasound done, so that way they could figure out whether my sister would be able to live or not. Sadly, she was not able to. When your body reads through your DNA, it looks for base pairs. There are four different types of base pairs, guanine or G, adenine or A, thymine or T, and cytosine or C, and each of them always partners up with one other. Guanine always goes with cytosine, and thymine always goes with adenine. So when your body reads through your DNA, it reads through all of these little pieces and then puts together who you will be. When you have your genome done, it, the company looks at all of your different little pieces of base pairs and it can tell you what you're prone for. Are you likely to have problems having children or are you going to most likely have breast cancer? Are you more likely to be overweight? This is why DNA is so important. Once you know what you are prone for, you can, make it, you can make the things less likely or more likely to happen by changing your lifestyle. Thank you.